Champagne is synonymous to celebration. It's a kind of sparkling wine exclusively produced in the Champagne region of France. Sparkling wines produce effervescence due to the presence of carbon dioxide, which are seen escaping in form of bubbles when poured in a glass. Here, carbon dioxide may be produced naturally with fermentation or may be forcibly injected later. In Champagne, carbon dioxide is produced naturally with a traditional method which is also termed as Method Champenois in the Champagne region. Please note, wine producers outside Champagne cannot use this term and they instead use traditional method. Hello friends, Dr. Aarti Gehlot welcomes you to Hospitality Broadcast. Here in this video, I will explain the production process of Champagne. The production process of Champagne is quite similar to the wine making process from the stage harvesting of grapes to their fermentation. Watch the exclusive video on wine making process on Hospitality Broadcast for better understanding. Link for the same has been provided in the description below. Similar to wine making process, it also starts with harvesting of grapes. There are three kind of grape varieties, namely Pinot Noir, Meunier and Chardonnay, which accounts for most of the champagne grapes. Pinot Noir and Meunier are red or black variety, whereas Chardonnay is white variety of grapes. Based on the variety of grapes used, Champagne is of three types. Champagne made with exclusively black grapes, that is Pinot Noir and Meunier, is called Blanc de Noirs. And Champagne made from white grapes, that is Chardonnay, is known as Blanc de Blanc. Rosé wine is commonly made by adding a small amount of red wine to Blanc de Blanc. After harvesting, we go for crushing and pressing. In the stage crushing, grapes are crushed to form must. Later, during pressing, the grape juice is separated from must. After crushing and pressing, the juice is put into a tank and we go for fermentation. In fermentation, the yeast breaks down the sugar which is present in grape juice into alcohol and carbon dioxide. Once the fermentation process is completed, the clarification process begins. In this process, we remove the tannins, proteins and dead yeast from the wine. And we get a clear, still wine. Here, you must have noted, up until first clarification, the making of champagne is quite similar to wine making process. Next is assemblage or blending. At this stage, some reserved wine of superior quality is blended to create the base wine for champagne. The blending of various base wines is called cuvée in French. Now in the assemblage, we add sugar, yeast and yeast nutrients to base wine which are called liquor de tirage. Later, wine is poured in a thick glass bottle and sealed with a cap. Bottles are stored or aged horizontally in a cool cellar, where the second fermentation starts. As the fermentation continues inside the bottle, the pressure of carbon dioxide starts increasing as there is no way for the carbon dioxide to escape from the bottle and bubbles of carbon dioxide are formed and they stay inside the bottle. This is also the natural process of making bubbles in other sparkling wines. Whereas during the second fermentation, alcohol is also produced which also increase the strength of a wine. 
The best and the most expensive champagne is aged for 5 years or more. As the fermentation process continues, yeast dies and lees are formed. Lees are the deposits of dead or residual yeast and other particles or sediments that precipitate and move to the bottom of the wine after fermentation and aging. Because of these sediments, wine becomes cloudy, solution imparting complex and yeasty flavors. Now we need to remove that. And for removing of these dead yeast, lees, sediments is called riddling or remuge. It becomes hard to remove sediments from the bottom as we may also lose all the bubbles while removing sediments. For that, we need to bring these sediments towards the neck. Here, we keep the bottles on a riddling rack called pupiter with neck angled downwards. Bottles are then rotated by one eighth of a turn in riddling rack and gradually shifted to a vertical position so that leaves get collected in the neck of the bottle. This process may take from a few weeks to few months depending on the winemaker. Once sediments get deposited around the neck, the sediments are easier to remove and this process of removing sediments from the bottle neck is called disgorgement. Here, the bottle is kept upside down and the neck is frozen in an ice salt bath. This freezes all the sediments, also some wine around the neck. Finally, the bottle cap is removed and the pressure of carbon dioxide pushes the plug of frozen part out, leaving behind clear champagne. By doing so, a little bit of wine also gets spilled out of the bottle. During the disgorgement process, we lose some carbon dioxide and wine too. So, in order to restore the level of wine and carbonation, the winemaker adds a dosage leaker, also called leaker the expedition. This dosage consists of refrigerated reserved wine combined with the level of sugar that varies depending on the type of champagne. Depending upon the amount of sugar added during the process of dosage, champagne are of seven types as you can see them on the screen. After refilling or dosage, champagne bottle is corked and wired down to secure high internal pressure due to carbon dioxide in the champagne. Further, it is kept for aging. Now, it's on the winemaker how long he wants to age his champagne. After aging, the champagne is ready for consumption. If you like the video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe Hospitality Broadcast. For more videos, stay tuned.